Hey guys, my name is Petra. I am a type 1 diabetic. I have a nut allergy as well as a multitude of different other food intolerances. And today I'll be showing you a couple of fun party snacks that I like to take with me when I go to parties. Sorry for the noise. It means that the chocolate melts evenly and it will be a little bit faster. That's really good. I got lipstick on the microwave. And then with these all mixed together, you just... Today I'll be showing you a recipe for gluten-free meatballs. Just absolutely delicious. Knowing how to cook, it saved my life. Today I'm going to be making gluten-free meatballs with almond flour. So the ingredients that I'll be using today, one and a half pounds of ground beef, half a cup of almond flour, two tablespoons of fresh parsley, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a teaspoon and a half of ground onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a pinch of salt and pepper, two eggs, and up to a half a cup of water. So my favorite thing about this recipe is you dump everything into a bowl and then mix it up and you're good to go. So this is all mixed up. I'm gonna add some of the flour. And almond flour I find is fantastic. It almost mimics bread. It absorbs so much moisture. As well as for me, it adds a lot of protein, which is something that I need more of in my diet than I do need carbohydrates. It is one of the few nuts that I am not allergic to. So that's always really nice to have. So once all the dry seasoning and the eggs have been added and all mixed together nicely, it'll look something like this. And at this point, you add your water so you can get the correct consistency that you'll need. Also remember that as the food cooks, the flour will absorb more moisture, so it's almost best to have it a little bit damper than you would really think to have. So I don't think I need a full half a cup of water today, but I'm going to still add probably about a quarter of a cup. And this is also at the point that if you're using an alternative flour, that you wanna watch the density of your food as well. So now this is all mixed together. I'm gonna grab probably about a tablespoon and a half of the meatball mixture, roll it in together between my hands, and I have a meatball. I'm gonna stick it in my oven tray, and they're gonna bake at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. So here are my finished product of my delicious gluten-free meatballs. So the best thing that I love about this tray is that I'm able to take it from here out of the oven all the way to my friend's place where I'm going after this for a little get together. All I'm gonna do is just add some toothpicks to make it pretty and also means you don't have to use your hands, which no one wants that. But I'm actually gonna keep a couple of these for myself to keep at home for my lunch tomorrow. I'm gonna add some marinara sauce to the meatballs and cook some spaghetti pasta and I have some nice spaghetti and meatballs for tomorrow. Uh, another thing you could do would be make a meatball sandwich. You could just eat them at midnight when you get home. So this is great if you live on your own and you don't have a lot of dishes or pans or anything that you've learned how to cook with. So having it all being made in one container where you can just sort of chuck everything all in together and cook it all at once, you don't have to worry about making it a huge amount of dishes or having to have like a certain type of frying pan to cook it in either. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more recipes focusing on dietary restrictions. And if you leave us a comment on the comment box down below with more fun ideas for us to try, that would be fantastic. <laughs>